High school football is such a big part of America. The rivalries, the players' families, the cheerleaders, the games. But it's not all huge crowds and Friday night lights, especially for one team in New York City's Harlem. You see what we go through? We came and practice in New York City. We came and practice over. That's how it is. It gets frustrating to the point like we've had all our games away on the road. We've practiced in the dirt in a month. You're gonna know what it means to be Harlem and trying to do something with your life. You about ready to find out. They want you to quit. They expect you to quit. This is what they do to you in life. This is why you see Harlem like it is. And here to show us how it is, former Early Show correspondent John Franklin, who tells the story of this amazing team in his new documentary, Hellfighters, a season in Harlem. It premieres tonight at New York City's Tribeca Film Festival and has been a real labor of love for John. So congratulations. Thanks so much, Anna. Yeah, it's, it's an absolutely compelling story. Paint for the audience a picture of high school football in the city of New York when you grew up. Um, it, it's, it's basically a non-entity. It is a non-entity. You know, just like you said, high school football is huge, and it is. It, Duke Ferguson in the film, the coach, talks about it being the spirit of America. And you ask most people about the high school football team in their town, and you will get an earful of pride and statistics and rivalries and memories, and it doesn't exist here. There are 305 public high schools in the five boroughs of New York City. At the time we were shooting in 2005, there were 43 football teams. And of the 13 high schools in Harlem, not one had a football team. And so Duke Ferguson, this former NFL player who played in the late 70s, comes in and says, let's form a team. And, uh, and he takes kids from all around the community. This guy's a, a former uh, Dallas Cowboy, and, and he sees that there's no high school football. It's pretty much dominated by basketball. Why, though? What was his motivation for putting this team together? He made it very clear in your documentary. He wasn't riding in like some kind of hero, some kind of white knight here. Why did he think this was so important? I think he thinks that, as many people have said, that football is a metaphor for life and it teaches some very valuable lessons. Um, I'm not entirely sure of all his motives, but mm -hmm. I think it was to, to help these kids uh, move on and advance in their life. And one of the things that he lays out for them at the very beginning is use football as a way to pay for college. Use it as a way to get out of here and move on. Although that's not going to happen for everybody, he does give them tools to really go on and become successful men. They had to face all of these obstacles, even finding a place to play. And then you have this heartbreaking scene where they actually didn't fill out their paperwork. They weren't making their grades. They had to forfeit their first season. They forfeited their first season. They forfeited the first game that I uh, of the season that I was shooting, the, the subsequent season they ended up forfeiting. That's one of the things that I think Duke, uh, as great a, an opportunity as he's provided for these kids, there's still a few shortcomings in the program, and I think that's what makes the film somewhat different than the typical uh, documentary that you're going to see. There, there's no championship season. There's no mm -hmm. hurrah. Um, it's real life. I mean, this is reality, and, and he, there are some things that he needs to overcome and work with these kids on. How important were their parents, particularly, I know you were struck by the mothers that were involved with these young men. And these young men were from a bunch of different schools all around Harlem, came together. And that's, one of the, that's one of the real challenges, is that they don't have this bond. They don't go to class together. They don't eat lunch together. Mm -hmm. They come together. Many of them live in different parts of the city. Um, the mothers are absolutely incredible. I mean, they are powerful. They are strong. They are determined. Uh, one mother, Judy Jones, her son, Chris Ruffin, is a real talent, probably heading off to the University of Tulsa. He mm. was a junior at the time I was shooting this. And, and as Chris says, you know, the NFL for him is a goal. It's not a dream. And, and Judy's the first one to say... You know, people can train to become nurses and doctors and lawyers. Why can't my son be an NFL player? She doesn't look at it as something that he can't grasp. Mm. John Frankel, thanks so much thanks, for uh, showing us the, the dreams of these young men and how they're actually growing oh. to be men. It's, it's our pleasure. We've got, we're sold out tonight. We've got one more <laughs> screening that you can come to on May 5th. The tickets are available. Uh, we're so happy for you.